RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribed, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer with Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Today is the one day dedicated to the forgotten man, the American father. And if every father was like Phil Harris, he deserved to be forgotten. <laughs> More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. You may think you keep a close check on your money, but do you know how much you have in your pocket right now? Don't look, take a guess. Now go ahead and check. How far off were you, 25 or 30 cents? Well, for as little as that every day, you can buy the finest television there is, RCA Victor. You'd never miss the money. New RCA Victor television is priced as low as $199.95. And every RCA Victor has the automatic magic monitor, an exclusive circuit system that automatically brings in and holds the finest pictures possible. The magic monitor automatically screens out interference, automatically steps up power, and automatically ties the clearest picture to the best sound. Ask your dealer about his particular easy payment plan. How, after a small down payment, it may take only pennies a day to own America's most advanced TV. RCA Victor Television with the Magic Monitor. Here's another good reason for owning an RCA Victor. America's only coast-to-coast -coast factory organization for expert installation and maintenance is available exclusively to owners of RCA Victor Television. The RCA factory service contract is one more reason why every year more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Bay and Phil Harris. <laughs> Although it isn't commonly known, Phil Harris is an avid horticulturist, and he spends quite a bit of time cultivating flowers. This morning, he awoke early and decided to putter around his garden. He's fussing over a flower bed as Elliot Lewis arrives on the scene. Oh, gee, to think this should happen to me. Hiya, Curly. Oh, Elliot, wait till you hear what happened to me. It's awful. What's the matter, Curly? I got cutworms in my tuberous begonias. <laughs> Well, at your age, you got to expect those things. <laughs> Look, Elliot, you don't understand. This is a calamity. I've got cutworms in my begonias. Now, what am I going to do? Very simple. Sprinkle some Malvin on the sassafras. <laughs> What's a sassafras? You figure it out. I'm still working on tuberous begonia. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I know what to do. I gotta stop them before they spread. They're liable to get into my zinnias and pyracanthus. Oh, you're real nervous today. <laughs> what are you doing in the garden, anyway? Well, I came out to pick some flowers for the house. Today is a festive occasion. It's the most important day in the year for me. Do you know what today is? The fifth anniversary of the invention of the disposable beer bottle. <laughs> No, no, it's... Is it five years old? <laughs> Seems like only yesterday that I used to carry them back to the store and get two cents a piece on them. <laughs> All right, Curly, what is today? Today is my day. It's Father's Day. Oh, I thought it was something important. <laughs> this whole thing's just a gimmick to get presents from your children. Look, Elliot, there's more to this day than just getting presents. Now, when you have your own children, you'll know how precious they are. Why, they're like flowers. They're like, like, well, for example, my two little girls are like these, these tuberous begonias. Why, they got cutworms too? <laughs> Must be hereditary. <laughs> Ain't nothing sacred to you. Of course there is. Curly, what'd your kids give you for Father's Day? Well, they didn't give me anything yet. The cheapskates. 
They're not cheap. They weren't awake yet when I came out here. Don't worry. My two little flowers have something for me. If they don't, you can plow them under. <laughs> Look, Elliot, you don't seem to understand. I don't care if my daughters give me presents or not. The thing is the attention and fuss that they make over me on Father's Day. Mm-hmm. Look, as soon as I pick a few more flowers, we'll go in the house and I'll show you what I mean. You just watch the fuss my children make over me. Mother, where's Daddy? He's outside working in the garden with Uncle Elliot. Where'd you put his present? We hid it upstairs in the closet, right next to the present we got for Uncle Elliot. Well, why did you buy Uncle Elliot a present for Father's Day? Well, we felt sorry for him. He doesn't have any children. And besides, he sent us a threatening letter. <laughs> oh, he's a cute kid. What'd you get for him? Well, we got Uncle Elliot a pair of socks. And we got Daddy a beautiful silk robe with his initials on it. Shall we go outside and give him their presents now? No, no. I want you to wait until later. I'm planning a little surprise dinner for Daddy. And I bought him a cake with Happy Father's Day on it. And you can give him all his presents at dinner time. Oh, good. I love parties. And I'm going to make it like a real party for you, too. You girls were so thoughtful buying a present for your daddy that I bought you each a present. Alice, Alice, I got you a pair of roller skates. And Phyllis, I got you a big teddy bear. Where are they, Mother? Well, I left your packages on the kitchen table, but you can't open them now. You'll have to wait until dinner when we can open all presents together. Now, you two girls run along outside and play. And remember, not a word to your father... Let's keep this a real Father's Day surprise. Okay, huh? Mother. We'll go out now and... Hey, hi, Allison. Well, if it isn't my two little daughters standing there waiting for their daddy on Father's Day with their little outstretched arms full of absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, girls, there seems to be something that you've forgotten. You see, today is, uh, well, it's the one day that, uh... You've forgotten, too, huh? Well, as soon as you remember, Daddy, call us. We'll be outside playing. Goodbye. Bye, Daddy. Big fuss they made over you for Father's Day. They didn't even shake your hand. <laughs> Can't understand it. No presents either. Nothing. If one of them had at least slipped me a half a bucket of these... <laughs> I think your children are a couple of ingrates. You're right. After all the things I've done for them. What had you done for them? <laughs> I'll tell you what I've done for them. I sacrificed my whole life for my children. When I married you, I was studying to be a doctor. But when the children came along, I realized I couldn't make enough money as a surgeon. So I turned in my rubber gloves and became a wine taster for Manichette. <laughs> Muscatel Division. <laughs> and very few men make sacrifices like that. Did you make more money as a wine taster? No. But somehow I was always happier. I think of nothing but my kids. Every penny I get my hands on is divided equally between them and Santa Anita. <laughs> you do everything for your kids, and what do they do? They forget you. Well, if they don't care for me around here, I know what I'll do. I'll run away from home. Oh, don't Phil. try to stop me. <laughs> I'll wrap my clothes in a little bundle. Time on a stick hanging on my shoulder, and away I go. Bye and have a nice time. Alice, you mean that you would let me go? How can you be so heartless, Alice? You're going to let this poor 56 year old tot go out on his own? <laughs> what will he do with himself at night? I'll think of something. I'll think of something. <laughs> Alice, how can the children forget me on Father's Day? The one oh, day that... stop it, Phil. Nobody forgot you. Happy Father's Day, dear. I have a present for you. You have? What is it? A song. 
Wait till I get the band out of the broom closet and I'll sing it for you. <laughs> Crop of kisses don't seem as sweet to me. This year's crop just misses what kisses used to be. This year's new romance doesn't seem to have a chance, even helped by Mr. Moon above. Crop of kisses is not for me, for I'm still wearing last year's love. This year's crop of kisses don't seem as sweet to me. It can't be explained that this year's crop just misses what kisses used to be. This seem to have a chance even helped by Mr. Moon above This year's crop of kisses is not for me for I'm still wearing last year's Alice, that was the nicest Father's Day present I ever received. Of course, it ain't what I had in mind. <laughs> well, I thought the kids would get me something. Oh, and... Bill, I may as well tell you. They did get you something. Oh, they did? Ha, ha, ha. I knew they wouldn't forget their cute little curly-headed daddy. <laughs> they got a present for you, too, Elliot. Oh, they did? I knew they wouldn't forget my cute little poison pen letter. <laughs> Well, don't stand there, Alice. Where's my present? Oh, man, I can't wait to see mine, too. Where are they, oh, Alice? Oh, now, wait a minute. You'll see them later. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going upstairs and finish making the beds. Now, if you happen to see the presents, keep your hands off of them. Better yet, don't go snooping around looking for them now. Oh, we wouldn't think of doing a thing like that, would we, Elliot? Elliot, where are you? <laughs> Under the sofa looking for my present. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Alice told us not to look for the presents, and we shouldn't. Now, come out from under the salt. All right, I'll come out. You better give me a hand, Curly. Hey, Curly, where are you? In the fireplace. Sometime they hide him up in the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing up here. Well, there must be someplace around here. Where would kids hide presents? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know, I know. The built-in wood box there. Nah, there's nothing in here, Curly. It's empty. No, no, I mean in the back of the box. Look. See that small opening? Yeah. The kids are always crawling in there. They use it for a hiding place, a secret cave. Good. Let's crawl in and get the present. Uh-uh. That's impossible. Why? That opening's too narrow for either one of us to get in there. Shoulders are too broad. Now, if we had a skinny guy to get in there and we could go... Good morning, Philip. Uh, well, if it ain't no shoulders, Faye. <laughs> the human pipe cleaner. <laughs> 98 pounds of nothing. <laughs> yeah. He should fit fine. What are you fellas doing at the wood box? My kids hid my Father's Day present in back of the wall, and we're too big to get in there, and we thought that, well, that maybe you'd crawl in there for us. Well, why should I crawl in there and get your present? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, James Stewart. I forgot to tell you. They got a present in there for you, too. Oh, isn't that sweet of them? <laughs> well, of course I'll go in. Just step aside. Oh, oh dear, I don't think I can make it. That opening is 12 inches wide, and my shoulders are too broad. They won't be when you take your coat off. <laughs> Come on, let's have it. Very well. I'll take it off. There. Attaboy. Where'd he go? <laughs> I'm right here. Wow. Look at that built. <laughs> hey, his shoulders stick out almost as far as his ears. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't let him kid you, Willie. Come on, crawl through there now and get them presents. Oh, all, all right, all right. Oh, oh, it's a tight, tight squeeze. Ah, don't worry, you're gonna make it. All you need's a little push. Wait a minute. 
There you go. Okay, Willie, hand out the presents. There's nothing in here. Now, how do you like that? We go through all this trouble and there ain't nothing in there. Well, Curly, where else would the kids hide the presents? I don't know. Fellows, I'm stuck. I can't, I can't get out. Let me think now. Now, where could them presents uh, please be? Please help they... me. I tell you, I'm Will stuck. Will you be quiet? I'm trying to think. Hey, Curly, do you think the kids might have hidden the presents in another room? Yeah, fellows, please do something. I'm stuck in here and I can't get out, I tell you. I can't get out. We heard you. <laughs> Come on, Curly, let's go in the other room. I can't think with all this noise going on. <laughs> hey, Ellie, do you think we ought to leave Willie in the wall? <laughs> Why not? We got no further use for him. <laughs> True, but I get... No, look, we better get him out of there. Look, let's go out in the garage and get a saw, and we can make a, that hole a little bit. Come on, Ellie, let's go through the kitchen. I don't see why we have to waste our time on him. I'm anxious to see my present. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, Curly, on the kitchen table there, what do you see? Ah, a cake with Happy Father's Day on it. Yeah, but what do you see right next to it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two gift wrap packages, a big one and a small one. I hope you'll get something nice in your small one. <laughs> you know something? I bet you're right. Why? The small one has got to be for me because the kids probably got me the pipe I wanted. Well, why guess, Curly? Let's open them and see. Okay, we'll. O now, Elliot, we can't do this. It's cheating. Let's wait until the children give them to us. After all the trouble we went through to find them, let's open no, them. Oh, no, now, I tell you, you can't open the packages. We promised Alice we'd keep our hands off of them. All right, we'll keep our hands off of them. You hold them steady with your feet, and I'll bite them open. <laughs> <laughs> ah. That wouldn't be cheating. Well, let's get started. I'll hold the packages with my feet and you start nibbling on the string. <laughs> okay, Curly. <laughs> that got it. Now to see what's in my package. I can't wait to see what my little girls bought me there. What'd you get, Curly? A pair of roller skates. <laughs> they must be after my insurance money. <laughs> I'll break my neck on these things. What did they get you? A wind-up teddy bear. <laughs> Your present's better than mine. Why is a teddy bear better than roller skates? Well, you can take yours to bed with you. <laughs> I have to take mine off at night. Alice don't like cold wheels on her back. <laughs> I think your kids are a couple of wise brownies. What kind of presents are these? I guess the kids are getting back at me. For their birthdays, I gave each of them one of my records. Which record? Oh, I don't remember. Nobody ever plays my record around here. Let's spin it and see what happens. I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right. A rambling and a gambling man, I'm free every night. I eat a boda, I stay three times a day from a boy. More than any guy in this whole town can afford. I got a big electric fan to keep me cool when I sleep. A mattress stuffed with dollar bills to tickle my feet. My motto is meet them and cheat them and love them and leave them and break them in right. I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right. My house was built with pawn shop tickets, red, white, and blue. My suits are made of tiger skins right out of the zoo. I got a lot of money in the bank, I made it myself. The hearts of all my girlfriends lying right on the shelf. The gals all stop and whistle every time I go by. But I'm pretty darn particular, I'm telling no lie. I'm in there wheeling and dealing and really appealing and high as a kite. Come on, let's fly together, cause I'm rugged but right. I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but fair. 
you caused me plenty of worry, put this gray in my hair. You got the lips that sunk the ships of England, France, and Peru. Well, I'm just like Napoleon, cause you're my Waterloo. I'd like a 15-minute intermission in you, 48. Love to make it longer, but I've got a late day. My morals have always been gone with the wind, so let's breeze it tonight. I just called up to tell you that I'm rugged but right. Don't overdo it, cause I really overdo it last night. Hey, Elliot, how'd you like that? Shh, shh, shh. Quiet, girl. What's the matter? Your singing put my teddy bear to sleep. <laughs> and I don't want to wake you. Oh, be quiet. I won't be quiet. Your daughter's giving me a teddy bear. I don't think it's a funny gag. Elliot, it's not supposed to be a gag. You don't understand children. It's, it's their way of expressing their emotions. Oh, them crazy mixed-up kids. <laughs> Look, Elliot, don't you get it? Look, I haven't been playing with my children for a long time, and they gave me roller skates as a hint. Now, when they go roller skating, they want me to go with them. Mm -hmm. Now explain the bear they gave me. <laughs> Well, that's a little more difficult But I'll have a go at it Wait a minute, I believe I got it You see, the girls feel sorry for you You don't have any children of your own You're all alone So they bought you a teddy bear to play with hmm. I got news for you, I ain't gonna play with it <laughs> Why don't you just try it? You might like it. I know one thing. Mm -hmm. If my kids want me to skate with them, I'm going to skate with them. And I... Hey, mm -hmm. look here. This linoleum, it's, that's a wonderful place to practice. I'll just take the skates out of the box and put them on. Gee, Mom, they're ball bearings. <laughs> Girl, you can go along with this if you want, but not me. When I see your kids, I'm going to tell them what I think of their cockeyed teddy bear. You're not going to tell them nothing. I ain't going to let you hurt their feelings. When the kids come in, you're going to be playing with them. Oh, sure, sure. I'll wind it up like this, and then we'll dance around the kitchen floor. That's come it. along with you, Teddy. We are going to dance. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Ha, 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 ha. Mm -hmm. Anybody home? Careful, dear. Don't slip on a linoleum or you're dirtier with a brown coat. Run for your lives. The rocks in his head have started a landslide. <laughs> All right, wait a minute, kid. There's nothing wrong with me. Then why are you waltzing with that midget in the raccoon coat? <laughs> Look, Julia, I ain't waltzing. She ain't a bad-looking thing, but you ought to oil her. She squeaks a lot. <laughs> What's your figure like, Mr. Lewis? Take her coat off. Julia, she happens to be a little bear. Keep the coat on. I'm too young to look at bear midgets. <laughs> Julia, calm, calm now. Just listen for one minute. That happens to be a teddy bear. He's dancing with a teddy bear? Mr. Harris, how can you sit there and watch this childish joy dance? Dance. Mr. Harris, what do you got on your feet? <laughs> My roller skates? Ooh, we got a kitchen full of them today. <laughs> a roller skater and a teddy bear dancer. Look, kid, will you just be quiet? Now, give me a hand. I want to stand up on these skates, and I'm a little unsteady. Okay. see daisy now, wait a minute, Julius. Don't let go of me. Man, I haven't been on these things since I was a kid. In fact, I've forgotten how to skate. Hey, how'd you get going? That's easy. I'll help you. First of all, I'll point you in the direction I want you to go. Then I can back you and give you a nice big push like this. Wait a minute, Julius, help. I can't stop myself. Hey, look Wait. out, Curly. You're heading well, right for the... Oh, <laughs> this cabinet. 
<laughs> he couldn't have hit the dish cabinet. Why not? I aimed him for the glass cabinet. <laughs> I know, but you put too much English on him and you backed him off the sink. You're right. I think I'll try again. Come on, Mr. Harris, on your feet. Go away from me, you little thinkit. <laughs> Think it? That's a small think. <laughs> Look, Ellie, you help me up. What happened anyway? I... I'm not sure. It happened so fast. You were standing on your skates like you are now. Julius got in back of you, and he gave you a shove like this. There he goes again! Wait a minute, how? Hey, look out, Curly. You're heading for the kitchen well, table. I can't help it. The cake's on it. I can't... Mm. Good shot, Mr. Lewis. Now it's my turn again. On your feet, Mr. Harris. Will you two cut it out? <laughs> Can't you see I need some help? At least this fall was a little softer than the last one. I landed on something soft and squishy. What'd I sit on anyway? Well, I ain't sure, but on the seat of your pants, it says, Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's all the commotion in here? What's going... Oh, no. What happened to my cake? Turn him on, Mr. Harrison. Show her. <laughs> Phil, what did you do? Honey, I put the skates on the kids gave me for Father's Day, and the I was... Skates? Phil, the skates are for Alice. I have the presents the children bought you and Elliot right here. I was going to put them on the... Oh, I might have known that the kids didn't give me any skates. Alice, give me my presents. Yeah, let me have mine, too. I can't wait to see what the kids got me. Y'all grab. Hey. Look what the kids gave me, a beautiful silk robe. What'd they give you, Curly? 35-cent pair of cotton socks. <laughs> with clocks yet. <laughs> I was better off with the roller skates. I'm happy with my silk robe. I can't understand. Now, just a minute, Elliot. You got the packages mixed up. The robe is for Phil. Can't be for him. It's got my initials on it. Let me see that robe. I thought so. Those initials are P.H. That's right. Pelly at Hooas. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Will you get that, dear? Yeah, honey. Is this the Harris residence? Yeah, but I don't want to buy a thing. There's not a thing we need. My wife and I just ordered an RCA room air conditioner for the kitchen, and we don't need any brooms to sweep because the RCA room air conditioner helps us keep the place free of dust and grime. We don't need any fans because the RCA room air conditioner keeps us cool. But, sir, I... Now, let me finish now. You salesmen never give the other guy a chance to talk. Look, buddy, when I get through with you, you'll go down to your dealers and get an RCA room air conditioner yourself. Sir, if you let me explain... Filters uh... the air, cools it, makes it moisture-free, makes you feel better in the summertime, sleep better at night, live better all year round. And besides, you can have it installed and serviced by a skilled RCA service company technician. Mr. Harris, that's me. Now, if you'll step aside, we'll install your new RCA room air conditioner. Ain't that murder. You can't tell some guys nothing. This is Phil again, reminding you that nine out of ten forest fires can be prevented because 90% of forest fires are man-caused. So don't be an innocent fire bug. Be careful with fire in our forests. Thanks, everyone, and good night. Good night, everybody. Part of Julius in this program transcribed was played by Walter Tetley. RCA Victor's new super personal portable radio is no bigger than a book, no heavier than a lady's handbag. Yet it plays up to ten times longer than previous RCA Victor portables its size, without changing batteries. The secret behind these extra listening hours is remarkable new RCA batteries. The battery lifesaver switch can add even more hours. See and try RCA Victor's super personal portable radio at your dealers now. Next, hear best plays on NBC, the national broadcasting company.